Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason on this Monday. I hope it uh, finds you well out there. Had a lot of rain uh, so far in March in the Valley of the Sun. I kind of like it, right? You know, uh, uh, the heat is coming sooner or later. The later it comes, uh, the better for everybody. Uh, how, how about those brackets, uh, man? All the upsets, a lot of upsets early. Not so much. Not so much uh, this weekend, right? The, the 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 big boys showed up, uh, but uh, the the Sweet 16 is set. There's what uh, NC State, the only double digit seed left. I think everybody else is at least a I want to say like a five seed or higher. So uh, we'll see. I guess how all of that plays out as March Madness continues to roll on. It's a short week this week. Good Friday, uh, this Friday. The markets are going to be closed. The stock market will be closed. The bond market's going to be closed. And isn't it interesting that that is the day that they're going to release the latest CPI report? Kind of, yeah, let's let's not do it when the markets are open. No, let's wait till Good Friday. Uh, I got a feeling that, uh, once again, it's still going to be hotter than they want it to be but austin goolsby yes who yes austin goolsby he is the chicago federal reserve president uh, he was out this morning letting everybody know no 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 don't worry i still got three rate cuts planned in 2024 uh that's got uh, gold on the move uh, wall street uh, not liking it so much today. Uh, but, well, just a lot of different things. Uh, Boeing, more problems with Boeing now. Uh, the CEO, he's out now, right? Okay, uh, we're just going to have to try to start over again. Uh, then we, of course, remember on Friday we had heard from Nike and Lululemon. Today it was Best Buy saying they're going to close 24 stores. And then uh, we also got new home data a very different picture than the existing home data kind of surprising uh so we got all of that to talk about and a lot more our toll-free number 800 951 the website at allamericangold.com and jason a lot of a lot of people are you know waiting we're in this game when is it gonna happen uh, when when are we going to see uh, the 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 bigger slowdown? You know, you got Wall Street, the debt markets still at you know right around all time record high territory. But a lot of people are talking about the bubble again, right? Hey, here here we are. We're in this bubble territory. We saw it, you know, the dot com bubble, the financial bubble, right? And, and now everybody's talking about this latest bubble, and it's hard to it, it's hard to argue with the amount of debt that's been printed all over the place. That yeah, it kind of feels like another one, doesn't it? I think it's been a bubble for a long time. I just don't think that uh, they want to stop inflating it. It's, uh, it's I guess, it's the uh, the, the extremely tough uh, uh, <laughs> outer shell balloon that just won't quite pop, right, Joe? But it will. It, it it'll have to deflate at some point. But uh, that's the whole thing about inflation. That's what that's what inflation does is it inflates bubbles. That's why they use the words they use. At some point, the inflation will stop at, at some level. Joe's talked about it for years now that when the, the labor markets crash and people are firing and businesses are closing that's what stops the inflating of the bubble and the bubble will burst and joe it doesn't matter if it's this year or if it's next year but uh, there's going to be tough things going on all the way through the whole stretch yeah this is you know jason and i talk about this is the year of chaos right where where nothing kind of uh, makes sense and, and yet at the same time it it makes a lot of sense you know just think about uh, when we talk about inflation right so inflation been picking up momentum picked up momentum in january picked up momentum in february and yet uh, you've got the federal reserve i mean jay powell last week i mean could you get any more dovish i don't think you could Right? Oh, no. And, and, and you look at these guys and their, their little dots on a chart. I mean, the Federal Reserve, 
is saying, hey, not only are we going to cut rates this year, we're cutting them next year, we're cutting them the year after, and you're like, but what about inflation? Well, you know, hey, we'll, we'll worry about that uh, some other time because, well, look at it. it. It went down, right? It's not at 9% anymore, right? It's, it's only at 4%. So uh, it, it really creates uh, – Lack of price discovery. That's really what's happening in the markets right now. You know, how, how do we get bubbles? Well, because Wall Street isn't allowed to really do its job, which is price discovery. I mean, that's its job. How much is Apple worth? Or how much is is uh, Best Buy or Walmart or, or any of these? How much is it worth? How much are the debt markets worth, right? How much is a, a U.S. Treasury worth or not worth, for that matter? And when they introduce money printing, right, it's because they want a high price discovery. That's just as simple as you can put it. You don't need a, a master's and a Ph.D. in economics for any of this. Because why do they do it? Why do they Inflate. Why do they make our purchasing power worth less? Why do they make the money in our bank worth less? Why would they do that? I mean, does that sound like a great economic plan to anybody? No. But when we have these bubble eras, it's because Wall Street is simply reacting to the bubble. Hey, they keep throwing money at us. Well, we're, we're, we'll keep going. Until all of a sudden, something happens that causes the bubble to break. Jeff Gunlax is back out again talking about what he thinks the markets look like. I'll tell you about that next. 800-951-0592. Pitcherado News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Monday. A quick look in at the markets. Uh, the Dow is down 130. The S&P's down 8. The Nasdaq's down 14 points right now. The 10-year note at 425. Crude oil up a dollar 60 here. Uh, 82 and change. Brent crude 87. Unleaded gas futures. You, uh, you guessed it. Higher again. How about how about diesel? Heated oil higher again as more uh, attacks on Russian oil refineries, uh, putting pressure on supply. Gold's up 18 and change, 2178. Silver is higher as well at 2475. And, and just think about right now, we're already at the end of March. The state's fiscal years, the, the vast majority, like 40, I'm going to say it's like 46 states. Their fiscal year ends the end of June. The federal government's fiscal year ends at the end of September. By the way, did you see that disgusting uh, legislation that got passed? Uh, two separate bills uh, totaling over one point, almost one point seven trillion. All kinds of ridiculous pork spending on all all kinds of nonsense uh, that none, no federal tax dollar should ever be spent on at a time when we're blowing up budgets. It, it's sad. It really is. But why why am I bringing those things up? Because let me tell you right now, this may be the year of chaos, but you need to prepare ahead of time for what's coming. Do you know the amount, billions and billions, hundreds of billions, when you factor in all the states, they got to spend less money next year. Why? Oh, well, all these big budget deficits, all the COVID money, it's all gone. Right? California all by itself has a $76 billion deficit, right? I mean, they, they, they can't run budget deficits, right? They got, you know, they, they don't have a printing press. So there's going to be a lot less government spending coming from the states starting July the 1st. The federal government, let's face it, uh, they're a train wreck of epic proportions. 
and preparing for 2025 and 2026 and, and preparing ahead of time before this bubble breaks is what you need to do. Check out our friends over at Y Refi. Up to 10.25% fixed rate of return. You heard that right. Fixed rate. What does that mean? It means it's what happens every month. But what if this happens? What if that happens? Oh my gosh, what if it doesn't matter what happens? Not correlated to Wall Street. That's probably the biggest thing. Doesn't care about the Fed. Doesn't care if Donald Trump can make his bond payment today. Boy, what a... When they seize that stuff, what a ridiculous thing that's going to... So this is what I'm saying. We've really reached uh, idiocracy, haven't we? It's finally here. You know, if you ever watch... It, it wasn't a great movie, but if you've ever watched it, you'll know uh, what I'm talking about. Be smart here. Get diversified. If you've got more than $50,000, check out our friends at Y-Refi. Invest, Y-Refi.com. That's the word invest, the letter Y, R-E-F-Y.com. Or just make it easy. Call them up. 888-Y-Refi-24. And James, Jason, uh, Jeff Gunlot is talking about this AI bubble. Right, because, again, right, that's been the big thing, right? It's AI, AI, right? Microsoft, Google, NVIDIA, right? Amazon, right? It's AI, AI, Apple, AI. Well, he's saying, huh, kind of reminds me of the dot-com bubble again. Here we've got all of these record high valuations. Everybody thinks, right, this is this is going to be the thing where, where – uh, it's going to be so great, right, Jason? Everybody can fire everybody, and AI is going to, it's going to change the world. Well, maybe, maybe not, but, but he's saying it's starting to feel a lot like 1999, where he said that the NASDAQ had surged 80%, and 12 months later, it was down. 85% from its peak. So, again, I think a lot of people are, are seeing a lot of similarities here to the previous bubbles. Yeah, I, I think that's a good thing to look at. I, I think this is different, um, but I, I think what it's going to be is how important is AI. Uh, I think I think money will keep pouring into that sector, Joe. I think a ton of money is going to keep pouring in there, but here's the thing. It's not necessary, right? It's not abundantly right. imminently important so once you know i've, I've seen some uh, i saw some sell off of some of the magnificent seven stocks you know there's a couple of those we're starting to sell off a little bit when the when some of the bigger stocks and some of the big money starts to pull out of these bigger sectors ai will follow it i, I believe because i i like i said when when things are crashing and burning people go they fly to safety right joe so I think I think it's uh, it's not exactly like dot com, Joe, but it's it's a good comparison because when the money goes, it's going to go. That's just all there is to it. Yep. Yeah, and 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 I think that's absolutely right. They're never the same, right? It's never the exact same. It's the the similarities. And again, go back to what we started with price discovery, right? When you, it, it's really hard to know value of something when you're running. Two and three trillion dollar budget deficits, right? It's really hard to know the value of things when the Federal Reserve says we're going to break our mandate, because that's really what they're, they're saying, isn't it? Right? Because what, what's their mandate? Full employment, stable prices. Well, the employment level, if you want to believe the numbers, and, and, and again, they, they are what they are, right? We have full employment. We, we, we do. So why in the world, if you tell us that 2% is your stable price target, which on its face is ridiculous, and the numbers double that, by the way, because that was the core last month, double. It's actually a little more than double, which really means, well, of course, all of us know. That number's a lie anyway. It's not even true. It's some some a, a bunch of academics coming up with ways to justify lying about the inflation number. 
and then getting the stock market people to cheer you on, right? Because you, you're like, you know, I guess, I guess you could look at it this way. Could you imagine if they didn't lie about it? Right? Uh, what if they came out and said, oh, okay, well, hey, guys, I'm Good Friday. Since it's Good Friday, God is watching. We're going to tell the truth on Friday. Now, the markets are closed, but we're going to tell the truth. And the actual inflation numbers, six, seven, eight. What do you think would happen? Do you think they would be talking about we're, we're going to cut rates, right? They, they would be talking about, hey, we may have to go back and raise rates by 75 basis points again like they did at the beginning. You know, the funny part is this has been going on since last summer. Because you remember, they told us, they promised us, oh, there's a delayed reaction. Right, Jason? That's a de delayed reaction. I mean, we raise them. you got to give it time. It takes time for it to work. Well, here's the thing. They want you to believe that. They want you to believe something that isn't true. Because what is inflation? Most people will try to tell you that it's the price of things going up. That's not inflation. It's not. Inflation is money printing. That's what's inflation. Have they stopped printing money? Now the Fed, oh, look, it, we're selling off our balance sheet. Now don't pay any attention to these other programs that we're doing. Right? Don't pay attention to those things, right? Because, you know, we're, we're, you know the, the thing that we want you to hear about, that's what we're, 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 we're contracting. As we run deficits the world has never seen before. And Jason, this is why bubbles get created. Would the Dow be at 39,000? Would the S&P be at 5,000? If they told us the truth about inflation, if they had the Fed's funds rate rising, right, right, the Fed funds rate right now, to be honest with you, to combat inflation, probably has to be somewhere between 7 and 8% right now. Not 5 and a quarter to 5 and a half, because real inflation is higher than that. But yet here we are, and this is how we get these bubbles, and I think this is why Guys like, like Jeff Gunlet, Bill Gross, and, and, and others, even Warren, look at, look at Warren Buffett. He's a great one to look at. Is he buying anything? Has he bought anything? Nope. Nope. Right, Jason? Why? It's too damn expensive. I'll just wait. Sold a lot of stocks. You know, he sold a lot, he sold a lot of stocks. He has a lot of cash sitting aside. Uh, I heard he's looking at some stuff, but uh, you got to be looking because you're waiting for the price to go down, right? <laughs> he's, he's he's waiting. He can afford to wait. He can afford I'm, to wait. I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking. And you know what I'm saying, right? I'm too expensive. I'll, I'll just wait a little while. It really is something where uh, we continue to allow them to get away with it. And that's really the problem. Right? Because most people, they, they, they've got you convinced about your 401ks and and those that have done real well they probably like it hey you know what hey i got a lot of money in my 401k i was fortunate because a i i made a lot of money and b i didn't get laid off during any of the crashes right and i didn't have to rate it right it's crazy you should see the numbers like vanguard I uh, can't wait till they post their new numbers and how many people have had to take their 401ks and rate it just to be able uh, to continue to pay the bills. But those are so, so few and far between. And unfortunately, as we saw, uh, just imagine if you were in retirement in 07 and 08. And, you know, maybe you thought, man, I, I did it. I got to a million dollars in my 401k. <clears throat> And the next thing you know, that thing's got four hundred grand in it, right? 
almost overnight. Felt like overnight, didn't it? And, and these are the things that you have to be prepared for. This is why we tell you have that gold and silver put away. Because all this gold and silver does keep you whole. How much, you know, Jason calls it savings, which really it is, right? How much of your wealth do you want to preserve? That's really the question. How much? I mean, I don't know when the bubble breaks. Could it break this year yet? Next year? The year after? I, I don't know that it can go any farther than that. I really don't, right? I, if, if, I would, if, you, if you said, take your best shot at it, I, I would tell you early 2025. That, that's, that's my feeling on this thing. Do I think the Fed is full of it? Absolutely. Of course they are. Right? Think about it. Oh, let's see. Inflation. It's, it's just transitory. Oh, yeah. No, it's fine. Oh, wait. It isn't fine. Oh, it's a supply chain problem. But what is it now? Oh, well, now, now it's just being inconvenient. Right? right? That's all. You know, it's just being inconvenient right now. Don't worry. We still got this. Yeah. I'd be real worried. Thanks for Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason. We're going to be back right after the break. 800 592 This was, this is huge. People don't know this, but this is huge news. Huge. Uh, the, uh, the Trump bond, which was $464 million, which he was not going to pay. And they were going to seize assets. And, of course, once you seize assets, right, uh, price discovery. Here, you want to talk about price discovery. That's the wrong way to have it. The appeals, uh, New York Court of Appeals has reduced it to $175 million, which is still outrageous, right? This is a Trump civil fraud judgment where nobody got defrauded. <laughs> Just... Right? Nobody got defrauded, but yet he, he committed fraud. But no one got defrauded. But this is a big deal. I'm, I'm hoping that Donald Trump pays the bond. Because if he really wanted to do damage to, to Wall Street in the United States, uh, don't pay it. Right? Because then they start seizing assets, fire sales uh, at, at ridiculous prices, and it makes... Oh, my gosh. It, it would cause huge, huge problems. And I promise you this. You're not going to hear it on the news. Okay. Billionaires all over the world were making calls to Wall Street, to the SEC, to the federal government, to the Fed, everywhere. You name it. Saying, what in... And green earth are you doing? Right? Do you not understand what's happening here? But, but Jason, this is what happens with idiocracy. This is what happens when government has too much power and, and authority. Uh, and, and now really, right, this is another example. Well, how's the United, how are you any better than any of these other countries? Why should I, why should I invest here? If some, if some, somebody's going to take some obscure rule uh, and use it with some ridiculous loophole to seize to seize property from me, uh, again, it, it's one of these things where I hope that this makes Donald Trump go and pay it. But I, you know, he doesn't have to, right? He, he can maybe say, "Back with it, go ahead, seize it all." Yeah, I heard him say something to that effect. Um, <clears throat> you know, I. Uh, Makes me wonder if uh, if fraud is just another word for tax, because yeah, they've been wanting to tax the rich, right? Right. Right. They, right. You know, they, every, every word seems to be a new word for tax. They just you know they don't want to use the word tax, right? Because uh, you can't That's be taxing a, people right before the election. Right. You don't want to be doing that. But uh, uh, one other piece of economic data, right? So I I think this is good news. Uh, really, it, it it should be like you know fifty bucks, right? Not. 175 million but maybe that's enough maybe maybe that's something where maybe they had a, a deal 
right, where they're like, okay, well, we're already too far down here, right? We've gone down the rabbit hole. Uh, how much would you be willing to pay? And we'll just lower it to that. And, and, and again, you know, if he loses, at the, when all of this is said and done and he still loses this thing, it'll be a big problem. It really will. It's just like the seizing of Russia's assets are a problem. Uh, these things, this is so much bigger than most people realize. And I wish, I wish beyond wish that they'd let this thing go. It would have been great for Jason and I. Listen, I would have done a lot of business uh, if all of a sudden they started seizing all of these assets on a fraud case where no one got defrauded. Uh, but we'll see here. I think $175 million is still outrageous. Are they seizing assets? Or are they, you know, is it a certain amount of dollars? Because, you know, you, Trump doesn't hold dollars. These rich guys don't hold dollars. So if they're finding him dollars, there's, there's an empty well there. He doesn't, he doesn't hold dollars necessarily. So if they're going to seize assets, which that's what it seems like they're doing, that's that's yes. different. I, I did see him say he said uh, I can afford it. Someone's like, can you afford this? He's like, yeah, I can afford it. He's like, but this is unconstitutional. You know, he had the fighting words. Right. So I don't know, Joe. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe these things are going to be taken from him. Maybe this is a part of the plan. Maybe, maybe this emergency, this fake emergency that's going to build up. Maybe this is a part of it. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, new home sales fell in favor of remember the existing home we got some outrageous number i told you don't worry it'll be it'll be adjusted down uh but uh new home sales in february actually fell three tenths of a percent a little shocking because rates remember rates did go down uh there in in february but new home sales still up uh about five to six percent overall year over year sales were down in the northeast and the midwest uh, buyers, they're saying, have adjusted to the rate environment. Well, and I guess that, that makes sense, right? Well, how did they adjust? Well, they just bought less, right, Jason? That's how they adjust, right? Well, they, you know what? Uh, can't afford it. Not going to buy it. Isn't that how it works? <laughs> who, who doesn't say that? We can't afford this. We can't afford this. That's, that is the simplest of supply and demand, right, Joe? That's, uh, yeah, that's... That's that's how that's how you stop the inflation. I can't afford it. That's it. There's just not enough of that. I can't afford it just yet. Uh, And I'll tell you this: it's been the topic of discussion with some friends of mine that are in the food industry, uh, restaurant, bar, restaurants, catering. All of a sudden. Things are getting a little slower. They're, they're, it, 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 it's another stair step down, and, and, and it's that dilemma. He's, prices are still rising, but yet the customer is like, hey, gosh, that, that, that burger used to be 10 bucks, right? It's now 17 bucks, and, and, and the guy's like, man, I got it. I got to go to 18 or 19 bucks, but they can't afford the 15 to 17, right? This, this, is, this is what's happening right now. I think the restaurants aren't, aren't catching on as fast either, Joe, because I had a f- friend talking to me over the weekend saying, you know, you know I don't eat fast food. But he's like, oh, the fast, I don't even eat, there's no reason to even eat the fast food now. You can't even get the cost advantage of, of a sit-down restaurant. He's like the, he said the fast food he's eating is, is getting very close to the sit-down restaurant. And all that tells me is that the sit-down restaurants who have a little bit more of a connection to their customers are doing everything they can to help the customers. It's it's gonna it's gonna doom them if they, they're gonna have to raise the prices. You can't have McDonald's costing the same as you know the Olive Garden. You can't have it, right? Right. right. I mean, wait till California. What I think uh, April first. Uh, all the all the fast food places got to pay twenty dollars an hour of minimum pay. I mean, man, I. Oof. Uh, yeah, again, a lot of craziness. When we get back, though, I just got another great opportunity coming for everybody. It just got sent to me. Uh, got a great deal on $10 gold pieces coming up. I got a deal on some silver quarters coming up. We're out of that quarterback special. That's gone, but I've got another opportunity uh, for, for rolls of silver quarters. $10 gold pieces coming up next. 
800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason on this Monday. By the way, Donald Trump will have 10 days to post uh, the $175 million bond uh, that has been reduced by the New York Court of Appeals. Uh, but get into the specials today. I uh, just uh, got an email. Matter of, Brittany had to come in during the break to tell me because I, I, uh, I didn't even see it come through. But we've got 200 extra fine ten dollar liberties so that's going to be the grade above and, and this is what's going to be now right they're they're, they're running out of, of the low end here but uh don't worry we're going to sell it at a great price ten dollar liberty gold so these are the old uh half ounce gold pieces 1866 to 1907 we're going to talk about i had an email a customer email me a question about coins and bullion and all that. We're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, $10 liberties, 1 through 19 at 11.90. Right now, gold's up 18 right now, 21.78. 20 or more at $1,185. 50 or more at $1,175. Uh, and then on the silver side here, silver's up as well today, twenty four seventy five. And by the way, that's the March contract, which is getting ready to expire here this week. Uh, the May contract, by by the way, uh, right at that twenty four dollar level again. Uh, rolls of silver quarters are going to be two hundred dollars a roll on on U.S. silver quarters. So you get forty. Pre-1965, so 1964 and older, silver quarters uh, for $200. So that's a little over 7 ounces of silver at $200 at $800-951-0592. If you can afford 50 or more $10 liberties, do it. That's a great price. Uh, 1175 for 50 or more, uh, 20 or more, 1185 one through 19 at 1190 uh, But, Jason, people are, 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 are trying to educate themselves. And there's always uh, new people listening. I think every week people are like, this isn't right. I got to start taking gold really seriously. You know, 20 years ago, uh, when when I start over 20 years ago now when I started when I, I when I told my friends yeah I'm gonna go uh, into the gold business they're like what why why who who buys gold right you know you're you're the the the, the tinfoil helmet guy in the basement right you're the the weird uncle at, at the holidays right you know that that, that was the oh yeah don't don't listen to, 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 to Uncle Joe yeah, he's a wacko Right? And uh, everybody buy kitty cat, anything.com, you buy that. But now, fast forward to today, no one thinks that. Matter of fact, when I, when I run into people that, that I'll, you know, I'll call them casual acquaintances. People that, hey, oh, hey, that, that's Joe, you know, like uh, at, at our men's club. There's a lot of guys I know. I, hey, I know this guy and I know that guy. And then they find out what I do because I don't really, you know, advertise it. I, I just don't. Every time before uh, it's over with, they'll come back up to me. Hey, can I call you? Hey, can I talk to you? Hey, I got some questions. Right? Every time. And, and one of the big things, one of the problems, you know, uh, uh, with the Internet, with the Internet of things, you can find any answer, right? The right answer, the wrong answer. And unfortunately, that's the right part of the problem. A lot of times, right, you can find the wrong answer. So what's the deal with bullion and coins? This was the question. See, and here's, here's the thing. Guess what? There is no difference. 
Coins and bullion, people think bars are different than coins. They're not. They're the same. A one-ounce gold bar, a, a, a Mexican uh, Libertad, a, a Kruger Rand, a Maple Leaf, a coin, gold eagle. They're the same. There's only one coin that isn't. Now, we live in the U.S., so you got to go by U.S. law. So in the United States, our government has two <clears throat> distinctions when it comes to gold. Just two. It's not complicated. Just two. What are they? Well, collectible and bullion. That's it. What's in the collectible? Well, that's, that's pretty easy. Any gold coin still in existence, minted by the United States government, is considered a collectible. Now, are Roman coins and all that? Yes, right? All of those, right, you know, go to auction type stuff. But in general terms, everything else is considered bullion. I have a, a uh, in my office here at, 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 in, in Arizona. You know what? I'll try to get another one so Jason can have it too. It's a picture of all the stuff you can put into a precious metals IRA. There's only one thing that's not in there. Pre-1933 U.S. minted gold. We'll talk about that when we return. 800-951-0592. Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour. Again, the specials today, $10 XF Liberties, 1866 to 1907, 1 through 19 at 1190, 20 or more at 1185, 50 or more at 1175. Our, our normal $10 Liberties they're at 1195, so you get a, get a higher quality grade for less money. Gotta love it. Uh, rolls of 40 silver quarters at $200 a roll at 800 951 So we're talking about bullion, and the question was coins and bullion. Coins are bullion, unless they're pre 1933 U.S. gold. Uh, and I was talking about, I've got a big uh, uh, picture. <clears throat> in my office here in Phoenix. I'll try to get one up to Jason. And you can see all the gold you could put into a precious metals IRA with us. You put gold bars in there. You put gold eagles in there. Buffaloes. Maple Leafs. Krugerans. I mean, you Chinese pandas. I mean, you can put all the bullion in there. You know what you can't put in there? Pre-1933 U.S. minted gold. Why? Because it's not bullion. Now, when they confiscated gold the last time, there was only one form of gold you were allowed to keep. That was collectible gold coins. That was it. You can keep your collectible gold. All the rest of it had to be turned in. Now, are they going to confiscate gold again? I don't know. Are they going to have the same uh, clause? Don't know that either. Right? Stroke of a pen, the government can do what it wants. But when you talk about what is the most private way to own gold, in other words, when I buy it, when I sell it, if I trade it, what is the most possible private way to own it? And the answer is simple. Pre-1933 U.S. gold. Why? Because you can buy it, sell it, trade it. You can do whatever you want. And guess what I don't have to do? I don't need to issue a 1099. Matter of fact, I, I don't. You don't get one. I don't ask for your Social Security number. I don't ask for your driver's license. I don't ask you any of those things. Heck, it just happened a month and a half ago. I had to send a CPA. Here, here's the rule. Here's the law. You know what? He emailed me back. Thanks. I didn't know that. Good to know. I'll let my client know I don't need a 1099. Thank you. I mean, 
That's why we like it the best. I mean, listen, if they change the law, I may change my mind, right, Jason? I mean, we can, you know, wait, the law changes, we'll change. But as it sits right now, and it's been this way since 1985, right before we started minting gold again, that's when the government said, okay, hey, any pre-33 gold that didn't get melted down that isn't in Fort Knox is now considered a collectible and that's why we like it the best i hope that answered uh that person's question uh there really is it's super easy anything you buy coin bar whatever in gold if if it's if it's uh made in the u.s anything 86 or newer is bullion any foreign gold period bullion the only thing not bullion pre-1933 u.s gold jason yeah, and the only reason we're selling gold is because there's a, a central bank and federal income tax and inflation. We wouldn't be selling gold coins at all if it wasn't for the system that's put into place. We're uh, just like any guy out there, right, Joe? you gotta you got to make your way in the world. We didn't make the rules. We're just here to uh, help you out uh, trying to mitigate your losses. There you go, 800 Jason and I, we're coming right back with the Half-Empty Cup.